Today, we'll be covering how to use Langsmith to debug your AI applications, and we'll be using a tool called Studio to do so. The Studio is an IDE for building agents, and you can use it with any LangGraph agent that you've built. Let's take a look at the repository for this course, which contains our Explain Like I'm 5 agent. We'll cover what you need to start using Studio. You'll notice that in our repo, we have this file called langraph.json. Langraph.json is a config file that tells Studio where your agents are in your code base. If we open it up, we can see that we have defined three agents in our repository. The first is our explain like I'm five agent. This is the same agent we implemented in the first video of this course. Its job is to answer any question such that even a five-year-old could understand it. The second is the same explain like I'm five agent, but with a buggy implementation. And the third is the same as the second, but with flaky tools that sometimes don't give results. We can see in our config file that we've defined each of these agents in our file graphs.py. If we open that file, we can see that we've implemented each of these three agents in this file using LangGraph. The compiled graphs are what we've specified in the langgraph.json file as our agents. So this is our explain like I'm five agent. This is our buggy agent. And this is our flaky agent. Once we have our agents implemented, we can run Studio from the terminal. If we open up our terminal and we run langgraph dev, the Studio will be opened in a browser window. So now the Studio has opened, we can run our agents and debug them. At the top, you can see which agent we've selected and change the agent that we're looking at if we want. Right now, we're looking at the explain like I'm five agent. Again, the same one that we implemented in our first video. And the first thing that you'll probably notice is that you get a really nice visual representation of our agent. You can see that it has two steps, a search step and an explain step. And more than just looking at our agent, we can actually interact with it. At the bottom, you'll see that we can send a message to our agent. Let's ask our agent, what is complexity? Economics. And we can go ahead and run this. You can see on the right that we can watch our agent execute, and we can see which node is executing at any given time. This also shows us how the state of our graph gets updated at each step. And we can even switch to trace view to see the Langsmith trace that was generated by our execution. For this particular call, we can see that we have a search step followed by an explain step, just like in our graph. And we can see that in the search step, we call a tool to search the web. And in the explain step, we ask an LLM to summarize the results. This represents a powerful way to debug your application. You can call your agent, watch it execute, and then look at the trace to diagnose any issues. You can then make changes to your application and Studio will hot reload your agent so that you can quickly test your changes. To demonstrate how you might use Studio to debug, let's take a look at our buggy Explain Like I'm 5 application. Looking at our buggy application, let's ask it the same question. What is complexity economics? We'll go ahead and submit this and we can watch our agent execute. We can see what documents it pulls from the web, as well as what the final answer it generates is. And if we look closely at the final answer that it's generating, we can see that it's not explaining like I'm five. It's using terminology that's way too complex, including the phrases nonlinear interactions and heterogeneous agents. This isn't something that we would want to show a five-year-old. So let's try to debug this using Studio. The first thing we'll do is we'll switch into trace view and we'll step through the execution path taken by our agent. We'll start by looking at the first step of our agent's execution, which is the search step. If we click into the tool call, we can see what was returned by our web search. If we open up this content pane, 
we can see that this looks like a relevant document. The content of the document may be complex, but it is related to complexity economics. So let's check the next step to see if we can find the problem in our application. Let's check the explain step and click into our LLM call. Scrolling up, here we can see our problem. In our prompt to our LLM call, we're asking for complex technical communication. We're not asking for a simple explanation that even a five-year-old could understand. By stepping through the steps of our graph, we've identified the cause of its undesirable behavior. So next, let's go to the code and fix it. We've pulled up the code containing the implementation of our buggy explain like I'm five agent. Let's go ahead and change this prompt where we ask for complex technical communication. Let's make it something simpler. We'll go ahead and paste in a new prompt. This one looks much better. Let's go ahead and save this and we can return to the studio. Let's go back to the studio and refresh our page. If we start a new conversation and ask our question again, we can see how the result has changed. And if we take a close look at this new answer, we can see that it's much improved. Studio has hot reloaded our changes so that we could quickly iterate on our agent. And now we fixed our bug. Next, let's take a look at our flaky version of our explain like I'm five agent. Once again, let's ask about complexity economics. We'll go ahead and run this and take a look at our results. We can see that our agent actually refuses to answer the question. Let's investigate why. To do so, we can use a feature in Studio called interrupts. Interrupts, viewable here, let us set breakpoints in our agent's execution. We can set a breakpoint or interrupt right after our web search step to see what results are returned by our web search. With our interrupt set, let's go ahead and rerun our query. What is complexity? Economics. This time, after setting the interrupt, we can see that our agent pauses after its web search step, allowing us to inspect the results in the state. And it turns out there are no results. So we've identified the problem. Our agent refuses to answer because we don't have any search results. And we can click continue to complete our execution and verify that our agent once again refuses to answer. Finally, we can debug even further using a final feature in Studio called forking. Studio lets us go back to any previous step of execution and edit what happened. So we can go back up and see what would have happened if we changed our very first execution step. Let's edit the state to try a different question. Why are rainbows colorful? So we've edited the state of this step to change what happened. Now we can click the fork button to execute once again from this point, but with our modified question. If we click fork, we can see that we're going to rerun our agent, hit our breakpoint again, and see that we do return proper search results for this particular question. If we go ahead and continue, we can see that our agent does generate a nice answer for why rainbows are colorful. So our investigation process has told us that our tool is flaky and it either lacks good sources on complexity economics or it intermittently fails to return results. In our investigation, forking was a powerful way to see how our execution would have changed if any previous step had returned different results. To recap, today we covered how you could use Studio to interact with and debug your agents. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.